All right, Jonathan, I want to give you a, a little kind of recap of, of the trees you have on the hillside right here. Um, way up in the back, if I'm, I'm just going to assume that up to those garbage cans up there is the corner of your property all the way up to the top. And if it isn't quite that much, then you're going to end up with a little bit of extra information. But um, so you've got the pepper tree up there. This guy right here is an ash, which is probably a uh, sibling of this dude right here. That big guy is an ash tree as well. Um, so we got uh, California pepper, ash, and then another California pepper and another ash. Uh, this dude right here is an ash. Then you have a ficus right there. That's a weeping ficus. And then um, over here, it's a, a pittosporum. This guy right here, that three trunked tree, one, two, three, that's a pittosporum. And if you look closely, you can see a lot of bare areas right here that are dying and then you see the brown at the top that's really common for pittosporum trees um i have a feeling that well that tree is on its way out and then if you do construction and landscaping over here it's going to make it worse for that tree so that one should come out um, and then hiding down behind it there is a canary island date palm right there so uh, you had mentioned on the phone that you're thinking about um, changing all of this to California native uh, if that is true you will have to eradicate all the trees on the whole hillside because none of these are California native trees but what you do have California peppers which are not from California by the way the ash tree and the ficus are all extremely drought tolerant trees. So I would consider maybe having California natives as the filler plants down below and then using large areas like this big area up here and then the gap that's gonna be left behind after you take the um, pittosporum tree out and putting, I mean, honestly, the California coastal live oaks are, are the classic they do really well, but they'll get big. They'll fill this whole area right here in a decade's time, maybe, uh, maybe 15 years. Um, and if that's too much for you, then then putting something like a walnut or a toyon, T-O-Y-O-N, toyon, those are good um, uh, California native plants. The walnuts will get about as big as this ash tree right here. Um, and then the toyon will get about as big as this cluster of cactus right here. Um, so I think, uh, I think that about does it for the hillside. And then this is maybe biased on my behalf, but I'll say it anyways. Whenever people have small Canary Island date palms, we always advise them to take them out because, um, once they get, uh, bigger than about 15 feet tall, they become really expensive to manage like a couple thousand bucks every couple, three years. And, um, I just think that they don't really justify their own action. So I'm going to put that on the quote to take that one out and that pittosporum out. And then this olive tree will come out. And then that leaves us with the, uh, oh, here's a um, Canary Island date palm right there. That one actually looks easy to prune and it would not be expensive at all. But in a few more years, good boy. Um, anyways, uh, then the big ash right here, uh, I'm a little torn on this tree because it's got a ton of crossing branches up here. It's really cluttery, but it's honestly like none of them are really that bad. So I think it might make sense to leave it as is, or since you're re renting the property, we'll send our guys up to take out big dead branches and just leave it at that. Um, and uh, here's a really good example. Those are mega crossing branches that we can't take out. And then once you get up here, the crossing branches stuff like right there is a big crisscross. Those are small enough that they won't ever be problematic. Um, and, uh, and then this is another ash tree right here. Uh, and it might make sense to keep that one about that size because I don't know that you really want to have two big giant trees like this one here. So I think that covers everything. I'll look at the plans to see how construction is going to affect this area down here. Um, but bonus points if you actually watch the whole video and uh, we can reference these plants in the future off of this video. All right, I'm up here checking out the trees that are above the driveway. And I noticed that uh, right here you have a toyon. Um, so 
This is an example of a pretty good sized one, uh, you know, keeping in mind that the trunk is way down there. It's probably 15 feet all the way to the very top. They get these really cool uh, berries right here that the birds love. Um, perfect example of a California native. I'm sure no one's ever watered that thing and it looks um, super healthy. So it'd be cool to put a few of those up on the hillside. This I'm gonna give you a quote to take out because that's another ash tree. Um, and uh, that thing is a monster. Uh, I have a feeling there's a bigger one here. Somebody cut it and then all these sprouts grew up. So we'll cut those back down. And then you have another, um, this is a pecan tree, that stuff right there. And then this tall sprout right here. It's either a pecan or tree of heaven, but either way, I'm gonna add that on the quote. You'll see that on there. So I think that's it. Okay, so as far as I can tell, I've looked at the plans. The carport is going somewhere in here. What I can't tell is how close to that tree are we getting. Um, the plan shows all the elevations, but it doesn't really tell me if we're coming out like 10 feet from the edge of the house, which would put it somewhere even with that, um, whatever that little like scoop out seat area is right there, or is it wider than that? If all, but regardless, if all we're doing is putting in a few piles in here, um, that shouldn't be a problem for the ash tree. We might end up seeing a few roots here, um, but if we have to do some damage to some of the roots, uh, that shouldn't be a problem. What is gonna matter and what this is all hinging on is what happens way out here long-term. Um, my hunch is that you're putting a carport here because you have plans for that area over there. Um, and if we have to damage roots on one side of the tree, uh, we can be more liberal with that. If we can bank on um, the roots on the other side, keeping the tree healthy. But if we're gonna take out both sides, that's where we need to be concerned. So um, right now to, to get more into detail here, I think I would need someone to come out um, and put flags or markers where the piles are actually going to be um, and if there's going to be any excavating which it doesn't look like there is going to be a trench being dug but if there's going to be a trench being dug then that changes everything and we need to talk very differently about this but if we're just um, uh, just putting piles in here uh, I think just flagging those and then snapping a picture of it from right here will help me to visualize what's going to happen to the tree. Um, and then some of these branches up here might need to get cut to make room for the carport uh, roof, but that's really a minimal thing and, and can be dealt with uh, at the time of construction.